This is Rwanda. Nestled between these plantations, village homes, and meandering mountain roads is a patch of land no bigger than a football field. From here, this sky launches drones that carry blood to doctors racing to save their patients' lives. He's the delivery man of the future, and he's one of the first people ever to get the job. Now, he's waiting for the rest of the world to catch up. As technology replaces old jobs, it's also creating new ones. I'm Aki Ito, and I'm here to show you the jobs of the future. My name is Nizeman Abdul Salam, and uh, I'm a drone operator. Abdul works for a startup called Zipline. This is where um, you catch the drones, like that, that's the recovery system. Uh huh. And uh, in front of you, this is where we launch the drones. Wow. Zipline is headquartered in California, but it's all the way here, west of Rwanda's capital, Kigali, that the company's launched one of the world's first drone delivery services. So beautiful. <laughs> Does it ever get old? No. Yeah. Abdul and his co-workers are tackling a deadly problem here. Rwanda is among the poorest countries in the world, and much of it is connected by winding, bumpy dirt roads in the mountains that get washed out in the rainy seasons. That's made it incredibly difficult for regional hospitals to procure blood in an emergency leaving doctors unable to perform many life-saving operations. The hospital have to procure the car, they have to drive, I don't know, for three or four hours to Kigali, get the blood and then come back, so that's complicated. The idea is to give access to those uh, people who live in the more areas to the healthcare system. The space is clear, let to spin motors and launch a zip line 133. When a hospital asks for blood, the zipline team gets moving. If it's a typical day, like a normal day, you grab a package, you load it in the, in the plane, you get the plane ready, ready for launch. Noses. Flash and secure. You launch it. And then you wait for the next order. Guided by GPS and other sensors, the drone flies itself to one of the hospitals it serves. Then, it reaches its destination and drops off its payload. Hospital staff retrieve the supplies, and the drone heads back to base. And then, this happens. It's kind of like catching a fish. Uh, actually, it's so complicated more than that. <laughs> it's a little complicated. Yeah. So the line have to go up pretty fast, like, choop, and then the vehicle will catch it. Look at the space in between here. It's, it's tiny. It's really small. That's an impressive level of precision. OK, now you can lift it. Wow, it's incredibly light. Yep. Will you hire me now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Abdul is doing pretty well for himself these days. He's got a job he loves, and he's studying for grad school. But all that success today is built from unimaginable tragedy. When he was three, the Rwandan government stepped up its decades-long assault on the Tutsi minority, ordering everyone in the Hutu majority to kill all Tutsis. In just 100 days, 800,000 people were slaughtered by their neighbors and their friends. When uh, the people who were doing the genocide showed up, um, my father was the first to step out. We could like, hear the voice uh, kind of in the corridor, people talking, <clears throat> asking, like, where, where, is the rest of, of, where is the rest of the family? 
So and then they killed him, and they came in. They found out because it was this tiny room, mm -hmm. um, and then they basically hid anyone, like everyone, with a machete. I have a small. Uh, you see that? Yeah. Yep. Wow. Despite the head wound, Abdul survived. His two siblings and his parents didn't. He ended up at a homeless shelter. Then his grandma found him and took him in. Nanjye nka muba hafi kugira ngo umubi hafi mbega murinde kuba yababara kuko adafite ababyeyi babishe muri genocide. Tumaze kwibagirwa ibyahise ubu turareba ibiri imbere. It was hard. Uh, he was a stubborn kid at school and uh, caused a lot of trouble to my grandma because uh, sometimes I would just uh, quit school. So definitely I think uh, the first uh, couple of years of school was uh, really, really hard. Yeah, you um, were dealing with the trauma. Yeah, and then uh, after that I found, I found my life again. I was like, okay, if I get my education right and uh, I use the knowledge I have to serve the community, then I'm, I'm happy with my life. Abdul studied engineering in college while holding a variety of repair and maintenance jobs. When Zipline opened its first distribution center in rural Rwanda, he jumped at the chance to work on cutting-edge drone technology. But his grandma was sad to see him move out of her home in Kigali. And others in his extended family worried he was leaving better opportunities behind. In Rwanda, if you dress well, you go uh, work with a suit, and you have a big office, like, your family will be very happy. They thought like you were successful. Even though you may be paid way less than any, like, someone who's dirty every day, they will still think that is the, a true definition of being successful. Have you ever worn a suit to zipline? Uh, no. <laughs> Eventually, they all came around. Akazi akora nikeza karanshimisha. Kuko nahanga haturi ntabwo ariho twari turi. Ntabwo rero nabura kwishima ageze igihe cyo kumpeka nkuko nange namuhetse. This spring, Rwanda commemorated 24 years since the genocide. In those years, the economy's grown sevenfold. In the bustling city markets, the crowds of giggling kids, and the smiles of young mothers in the villages, you sense the optimism everywhere. Uburera twebwe turagenda tusaza ariko ababyiruka twifuza ko bakomeza bakagira ubumenyi buhagije gwejo hazaza From Google to Amazon, tech giants around the world are now racing to get their drone delivery trials off the ground. It's been exciting for Abdul to be at the forefront of all that. But what drives him is the impact he's making closer to home. I think like I got another chance to leave. So I was like, would I want to use that chance for, you know, having a lot of beers, uh, buying cars, you know, I like, why should I use the second chance for? And I think using it for serving the community and uh, making an impact on other people's lives was what makes sense for me. <laughs>